Betsy and Thomas here for the American Intelligence Media. We need to talk about the big elephant in the room, and it's not included in the tweets today, but I think we need to talk about it, and that is the clampdown of social media. As tell, we've been, tell us what's going on. As we've been pre- predicting for a year, go back to the audios and we will tell you that free speech is going to be clamped down on. And we told you this because of the U.S. Digital Service, which is digitizing everything for the federal government through Eric Schmidt. And why is Eric Schmidt doing this? Because Google, as he stepped back from the board and is now only con- in control of technology and the preparations for Alphabet taking over Google, which I told you was going to happen when Hillary got elected, but when she didn't, it upset the whole world. And Eric Schmidt is so stupid that he went, well, he's not stupid. He's so foolish that he went to China because he believed Henry Kissinger and the other Council on Foreign Relations members who say that China is now the leader of the world, which it's not. That's just ridiculousness. We've demonstrated why that's not true so many times. I don't even want to get into it. But what is really happening is that China was supposed to be the place where Eric Schmidt would be free to manipulate the uh, the rest of the takeover of the world because China was we were going to give our power over to China. Hillary was going to give all of our power over to China. And in essence, the thing that's in the room you're talking about is Alex Jones. Now, in the last year, we've pointed out that, well, six months ago, about 40-some of the top alternative um, people, news agencies, journalists, citizen Channel. journalists, mm-hmm. all these people, with they, they gave them the excuse that they didn't meet up to their community standards, and they dropped them. And at the same time, Alex Jones, uh, shortly thereafter, was threatened, and he told the whole world that they were taking him down and blah, blah, blah. And so they froze some of his videos, and then they later allowed them to come back online again. So the point was, six months ago, or whenever that happened, within the last year, it happened over time, but at one time there was one huge group of them that were all cut off. And remember, the demonetization was the beginning of the end of free speech. And the fact that YouTube was no longer playing like advertisements on YouTube, on Google, and then other social media like Facebook and other places, that those ads actually bring money. And what was really happening is that was a PSYOPs experiment. And that's the reason that behind Google, behind YouTube, behind Facebook, behind all the social media are defense weaponization tactics as a psychological operation. They are seeing just how addicted they can make us and whether how ill it makes us and whether they, this illness can drive us to hospitals so that they can monetize on what it is that they've weaponized. But unfortunately, it got out of hand. And so, as we pointed out, in America, there has been a concerted effort to prepare for the time when you will no longer Google anything. You will alphabet it, because Alphabet is now the mother company of Google somehow, though it came after Google. And it is going to take over, and it's going to create your dark profile. And that profile will have everything from your bank account, what you spend money on, everywhere you go, everything you do, everyone you talk to, they will rate everybody just like they do in China. Eric Schmidt just set this up in China and it's working marvelously. So if you have someone who's a dissident and they're on your list that you talk to, you lose social points and therefore you lose the ability to get in an Uber cab and use your credit card or to use your credit card or to have money in the bank. They just freeze your account. So they train you to think in their very limited spectrum of approved thought. Because if you go outside of it, make friends outside of that, you could lose your social credits and then you would lose certain privileges. Your digital box, exactly, Betsy, will limit you. And even who you speak to, what news agencies you go to, what questions you Google. If you question, now what, and then what has happened? And we told everyone this was happening. No one else tells you this. No one. We told you that Eric Schmidt went into North Korea to set up satellites so that even when the cables were going to be cut, he was going to give China the ability to still communicate with North Korea, its vassal. And then he snuck into China. And since then, what has happened? 
this social manipulation has gone completely off off the board, right? It is 100%. They have facial recognition. They ha- they can now look at the face of anyone and by what your face is doing after watching it for a moment, they can tell your emotional condition. They can tell if you're honest, if you're not, if you're a fraud. And then if you are, that's reported to the police on the street. They pull you over they, and they arrest you there because they suspect by looking at your face or by your activities, where you just went, where you just spent money, who you just spoke to, you are arrested. So now what has happened? A complete clamp down on Christianity after the Pope said that Christianity in China was the model for the, for the new world. <laughs> let, let people remember that. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah, that's what he, he's and always now, on the winning side. And I said at that time, yes. The Pope of the Roman Catholic Church is always on the winning side. He knows what's going on because he's helping manipulate it. So he is on China's side. Henry Kissinger's on China's side. Steve Bannon's on China's side. The Breyers, James Breyer, the Breyer family, all of them, China's side. Well, they're going to lose, as we told you. We're in a battle with China. And Trump isn't a conscious battle. The rest of us are kind of lagging behind. But China's in a war with Taiwan. Taiwan is begging for help. Eric Schmidt went there. He has total control now of China. That is the reason Premier Xi, Chairman Xi of China, is totally in control. He is now a dictator, perhaps of the worst order that we've ever seen in human history. And he's killing Christians left and right. He's locking up anyone who even has a look on their face of being a dissident. Anyone who Googles anything that he doesn't want them to Google He's the George Soros of China, okay? So Facebook went over there, and what do they try to do? As I tell you all the time, Facebook is as corrupt as can be. Mark Zuckerberg has no idea what is going on with Facebook. It is a military-run group, period. And those other people who are in his company, they could all not come to work tomorrow, and it wouldn't change anything at at Facebook. It wouldn't change anything at Google. It wouldn't change anything at YouTube or at Twitter because it's run by the military. That's why all of our greatest memory is held in cloud storage by Amazon, by Facebook, by Google. Don't forget Microsoft. They do their part too. And Apple and Microsoft and all the ones who cut Alex off. Now, we'll get to Alex in a second. But we told you free speech is gone in Europe because of Article 13, which was just passed that put the... um, the, uh, our. GDP in place, I think they call it, which basically says you can't use anybody else's URL on any of your posts because that's illegal. That's taking somebody's privacy. You have to pay for every. They made it impossible for people to do business on the internet in Europe. And all you have to do is go out and read the reports. I'm not exaggerating one iota. M- massive amounts of the people doing technology in the world just exited Europe and Britain. And, of course, your Britain is Europe, but I always separate that. So, same thing in Britain. No free speech in Britain. They will go after a grandma for saying she didn't like hijabs and put her in jail, like a Tommy Robinson for saying, hey, what's going on across the street? Uh, or questioning a policeman you get put in jail. Or saying that you're not going to give up of your knife your, that, that you use to cut a cake because it's just a temptation to a Muslim who hasn't been taught not to stab people to death with it. You see, no free speech whatsoever. Look at Julian Assange. So we saw it happen and why George Soros and 10 different groups that are the truth uh, ministry of Europe, they're the fact checkers, have now come in, taken over through the Atlantic Council and their group called the uh, Digital Forensic Research Laboratory, which is simply algorithms that draw flag that raise red flags for any word that George Soros doesn't like in his Open Society Foundation and Tides Foundation, which gives eighteen billion dollars have been given to, from George Soros to these American 184 non-government organizations. That's why these things are going on, folks. We have right here the same thing. George Soros might as well be the premier of America, but he's also already the totalitarian dictator of Europe. He with Angela Merkel, just gave, tried to give $400 million in cash from the, uh, from the German, what used to be the German Central Bank, to Iran, so that Iran would no longer hold the world hostage over the threat of nuclear bombs. 
Well, now, the other thing, too, is, of course, a, a week or so ago, we read that Facebook stock is collapsing, and then we are also looking at, I have posted it again on Truth News headlines, that the amount of money that Mark Zuckerberg and the top people at Facebook have taken out over the last few months, and you begin to wonder, are they trying to crash Facebook? Because they can't face the bankruptcy. I mean, they can't face the huge fines that have been put on them in Europe. So let's just bankrupt the company and just let it die. But in the meantime, we're going to get our money and get out. Well, Betsy, that's why you're the economist and you have a a degree in it because you see these things ahead of time. That's where I'm going. Let me back up, though. Okay. All right. Just make sure you get there because I think that's what's in play. Atlantic Council, the number one Russia phobia propaganda machine on the planet that was involved in creating the dossier against Trump. And Alexia Chalupa works in the Atlantic Council. So does the guy who looked, the only one who ever looked at the Democratic National Committee's server. Dmitry Alperovitch is on the Atlantic Council. It is a propaganda machine ran by George Soros and others, but major George Soros donations, as well as influence. So what were they doing there? They were taking over the control of free speech in Europe and saying what? that the Russians interfere in all the elections. And they didn't interfere in any elections. There's never been a single speck of evidence anywhere in Europe, here, nowhere. So that came to America. George Soros just recently, just weeks ago, gave hundreds of millions of dollars to Facebook as a donation, along with huge donations in kind coming from the Atlantic Council (laughs) to come to America and take over Facebook and use those same exact 10 truth ministry engines, fact checkers, and continue the same George Soros open society, no borders, let all criminals in. Uh, you know the, the same nonsense you hear. All that all that the Democrats are saying that comes directly that that is the policy of open society foundation. It is George Sorosism. But anyway, we won't go there. Even though he gave what was it uh, over four billion dollars to the Democratic National Committee for the last two presidents uh, elections. Three elections in a row. but And before that, lots of other money. And, and he buys at the, at the end. He knows to buy hundreds of millions of dollars through a super PAC. Commercials that convince anyone who watches television with subliminal control that you have to vote for Hillary Clinton. And this is well-known fact. And who, he u- who did he use? He used Lord Malik Bra- Lord uh, Mark George Malik Brown. He used Jeffrey Patty. He used Strategic Communications Laboratories and Cambridge Analytica. He used all the same Don't groups. Don't forget Richard Dearlove. And Richard Dearlove and, and Anthony Wood and Stephen Canada, Halpern. And Conrad Black, who runs all the newspapers. They're oh, all in yeah, cahoots. I forgot this. about Conrad. You know, and the Privy Council, what, has 597 members? We've gotten to know a few of them quite well, but it's just horrific thinking what the others could be up to. Well, Eric Schmidt got the Department of Defense, which would be the Global Engagement Center, to use on all news networks now what is called News Digital Initiative, which basically is a same thing. It's a digital fact checker, whether it be spoken, because remember, almost everything spoken on on the news network is in print for those idiots, I mean, for those parrots, I mean, for that echo chamber, I mean, for the, uh, oh, yellow journalism, propaganda, fake mainstream prostitutes, they simply read. Okay? They're talking hits. All of those are words. And then the scroll underneath, which if you read it, is pure propaganda and has, they don't even report that. <laughs> that Those are lies. So the lies underneath and the lies on the screen given by Avid, thank you very much, Di- Diane Feinstein and your husband, uh, Richard, Richard Bloom. Richard C. Bloom. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for giving us uh, way beyond what Heinrich Himmler and the SS and uh, and Nazism ever did. This is so effective what you're doing. It's really great. Every one of those words goes through a computer created by uh, an algorithm created by Eric Schmidt that says, what is truth? What is George Soros truth that is coming out of mainstream media? In other words, fake news. What is truth in the post-truth age, in the falsehood politics age? What is it? 927 news agencies they've identified. And I told you this weeks ago when it started, that within weeks, they were going to start chopping off the heads of everyone who doesn't have those same exact words. They will be red flagged. They will be checked against an, an algorithm and a, a subroutine that says, does it have a violence? Because as soon as you red flag, 
It's like Michael Cohen getting charged with criminal activity. Oh, really? Who didn't know that? He's the biggest taxi cab ripoff in New York. Uh, uh, Paul Manafort for tax evasion. Oh, really? Oh, it took a took twenty seven million dollars to to figure that out before he even was on the Trump campaign. He's as criminal as John and Larry Podesta, Tony. John and Tony Podesta. So what, you know, this is no surprise to anyone. You think Trump was surprised? Of course he knew he was using the most crooked lawyer in in New York. He had to, to get through the shark tank. But anyway, going on with the story, Eric Schmidt simply paid for this as a donation. And with the Department of Defense, our money in the Global Engagement Center, they are now controlling all news. And anyone who gets the red flag they say, did they use any of these words that they don't like? And I can say them now, but then we'll be red flagged. And we know what ones to avoid in some cases. And if they say them, you're out. Not going to give you an explanation. You're gone. So recently, 65 of the t- or, and more of the top alternative news agencies on the Internet, which have been going for some time since the beginning of all of this, one had 4.5 million followers Everything dropped, every video, everything off of YouTube, everything off of Facebook, everything everywhere gone. No sign of them anymore. Alex Jones invites them onto his show. Uh Uh-oh. And then Alex didn't think he was going to go down? Well, maybe he knew he would. Well, why did he do that? But we'll go back there in a second. 65 or more of these were all canceled all at once within like one week. No explanations. No, They can't get together the money. There have been a few lawsuits that have been proffered, but it doesn't matter. There will be down the line, just like Facebook and just like Google are having to pay or having to face, Facebook alone, $8.8 billion in security libel, uh, uh, libel uh, suits against them. That's the tip of the iceberg, they also got sanctions. They both got fantastic sanctions. They both got fantastic tax uh, bills that they had to pay, Google and Facebook and others. They're going after all of them. Uh, Facebook had to pay $2.2 billion in Australia. Uh, Ireland's going after them. So you see where this is going? They are being used right now in a last-ditch attempt to stop the midterm elections because if they can't impeach Trump now, it's the end of globalism. It is. That's it. That's what's happening. And I'll tell you why. Because we've come out with all the election rigging details. And I'm, these aren't conspiracy theories. We have given details of how it works. We've told you about Optech. We've told you what happens with um, right there at the ballot box. We've also told you about Malik Brown's influence. We've told you about the Privy Council and its influence I mean, it's all out there, and very important people listen and read our material. They're not just standing by doing nothing. And these aren't just gums flapping in the wind. This isn't just blather. This is evidence. We have presented the evidence. It's all over. If we went off tomorrow, it doesn't matter. We've revealed who the deep state is and the distinction between them and the uh, shadow government and the SES and how those rat lines work how the flow of money that Trump is stopping, almost everything we have pointed out, Trump has started putting pressure on and the money has stopped flowing to those corrupt systems that Obama had made into institutions. And they're going, oh my gosh, where is Trump getting his intelligence? How is he finding this out? They even want to know who he plays golf with on his courses. For instance, it's George Soros buying into Facebook. That was in only one report I saw, and, I, and, and then I had to go to far reaches to find it. And we brought it to you, and we've been telling you this. And again and again, we keep telling you things that seem so shocking when, you tell, when we tell them to you, but you need to listen because the predictions are correct. And this is what we predict, and we've been predicting this for over a year, that Eric Schmidt has set up for everybody what is going to be your alphabet digital box. It will only allow, they will manipulate you like they have, are attempting in their best efforts, the Global Engagement Center, to manipulate the elections in America and to manipulate people online. Now, they can really manipulate people online. They can get them to eat Tide Pods. They can get them to throw themselves out of cars while they're driving. They can get them to do horrible things I'm not even going to go into. Why? Because it creates dopamine. There are chemical reactions to what happens online, folks. And we've given you all the warnings. We've told you the illnesses. We've told you what they look like, how to get around them, to antidote them. But here's the sad 
reality. It's already done. It's already done. And here's what's going to have to happen. And we've already predicted this too. Trump is trying to stop all surveillance on Americans. Where's the number one surveillance? Facebook. Number two, Google. Number three, YouTube. Number four, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. Snapchat follows you everywhere you go. And then everything you do on your phone, Apple, and everything you do on your computer, Microsoft, all Twitter, uh, all everything you pay, all the PayPal's, all the PayPal's, whatever they're called. All your orders matter. from Amazon. All your orders from Amazon all go back to the IBM Eclipse Foundation theft of leader technology, social, uh, scalable, dynamic IP and and um, patents that were stolen. And if we simply had those companies fall right now, that's what needs to happen. And what happened on what happened in the last? Let's just ask this question: What happened? At the same time, in those last three weeks that George Soros moved in and took over through the Atlantic Council of Facebook and Eric Schmidt's taking over of mainstream media, which happened right immediately after all of Europe fell to George Soros' uh, pounding to get this Article 13 through, which means no more free speech there. This had to happen here. At Why? Because it's the last ditch attempt, as we said. So are the globalists going to go down? Well, these shill companies... And they're shill because of the following. All of the top companies, the FANG companies, right? You know the FANG. Yes. That would be Facebook, Facebook and Apple, Apple and, and Netflix, Netflix and Google and, Google and uh, yeah, the Fang. other A. No, there's two, two A's. Yeah. Well, that's right. So all the, you know, these top Silicon Valley, they call them masters of the universe. I call them masters of the dumb Amazon. heap. I'm sorry. And yeah. Amazon. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. So these companies rule the stock market. Oh, isn't that interesting? Stock market's up, what, one-third? Well, guess what? One-third of those assets are owned by central banks in America through the central banking system of the U.S. Federal, US Federal Reserve, which never in history has ever bought in to the stock market. What did that do? It drove it up falsely. All we have to do is go in, and what is about to happen, folks, is the following. They want to get Trump off of Twitter because he is ruling the world with Twitter, and they can't think of any reason to kick him off. So they're going to probably collapse that entire system. What will happen then? New systems will come up. Is Trump prepared for that? Yes. Notice, his Twitter system is now the only reliable news system out there. If there's anything good on Fox, don't worry. It'll end up on his Twitter or in a reference. And you can follow certain people on Fox if you like them. You know, they'll, they don't take you the full way. But here's the sad, sad news. What happened in the last three weeks? Facebook got kicked out of China. What does that tell you? Facebook is going down and Alphabet's going up. And now is the time. And then what happened? Boom, 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 boom. Soros and Facebook. Schmidt and Google in all news, all news being controlled by avid ISIS leader management and all elections controlled by Optech, the software that is in every single one of those stupid digital election machines. It's all been revealed. And where was it revealed? Get ready. Right here on this channel. And then it went to Alex Jones. And in the last three weeks, people have sent us, and the conclave was an emergency meeting working on this this morning so that I could get, make this pronouncement. So I'm not making this for myself. I'm making this for the entire unanimous conclave. Ba, 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 the clarion call. What is happening is what we predicted was going to happen. These companies have to go down. That's the reason they went up. So what does that mean? This is the crash. This is the way this that the senior executive service and the U.S. Fed and the central banks and the bankers and brokers all prepared for the big crash. This is the big crash. That's their We're only here. option. Because World War Three has been diverted. That's not going to happen for them. Hillary didn't get elected. So it's the economy. Now, here's what's really strange. And this is beautiful. These people, these corporations, which were driven by defense contractors, like, well, it was driven by DARPA. It was driven by InQtel. It was driven by the Highlands Forum, the Highlands Group. It was driven by S by Lidos and SAIC and all the groups that we've told you about, they didn't, because they're defense people, and they're really not very smart sometimes. They don't think these things through. So here's what's, here's what's going to happen to antidote that. 
Those companies all need to go bankrupt. We're going to take them over as a utility. We're going to clean them of their back doors, just as Trump has cleaned all the microchips of the Chinese mechanical engines that ride on the back that can, you know, turn them off, you know, doomsday off switches, all the back doors. He did all that. Yep. You don't even notice he's doing all these things. We keep telling you, most people don't notice. So there's no more Chinese chips anywhere. And China's going down, folks. This will be the first time in history China's ever lost. But anyway, what... Uh, so was it a coincidence that Trump went to Lewis Center, Ohio to give a speech this weekend? Uh, the big fangers are all down in Ohio, right there, all getting connected with the super connection system to do this yes. as we speak. Just look into it. All the big tech people just moved their big, some of their biggest regional offices right there. Why? It's going to be a coordination center because, you know, it's just John Kasich's Ohio. It's a globalist Ohio, you know, in terms of technology, you know, uh, fracking, you know, the, the, the myth of fracking. I mean, that's the way he brought his state back into uh, a balanced budget. So what's going on in Ohio is another sellout to the big tech companies who are simply going to control us even more. And you know what? We're going to be happy. Because I'll be able to go to my control, it's going to, my computer, it's going to speak to me, it's going to tell me what I want to know, it's going to tell me things that algorithms and software subroutines figured out for me. It's going to be giving me news that I'm so happy about. Anything I ask, it's going to give me one answer. Okay. It's, it's going to be beautiful. No, it's going to be taking away all free speech, all your but freedoms. But that's not what's going to happen, so let's not put that thought out there. No, that's what they want to have That'll happen. Be Thank you, Eric Schmidt. That will be happening in China. So if you want to see what could have happened here, watch China. It's already happened. All right. now, But here, we have still have some strategic moves we can make. What are they? Well, first off, they don't know who they're dealing with. And Trump, so I'm going to, he didn't tweet this because he can't. It's too top secret. So here we go. We don't have an inside. We just know that it has to be top secret because he can't let this out to people. But it, it's very clear what's going to happen. He just threatened the U.S. Federal Reserve that if they raise rates, he's going to squish them like a yes. bug. He's already told them to get their money out of the stocks. He's already told all of us the stock market's rigged. And he sent his main man, Munchen, down there to control the U.S. Treasury. He let the Federal Reserve get down to just two members. He, that he did send Munchen in there to check and make sure there wasn't any gold. Federal Reserve can't no. do nothing now. He now tells people that, you know, the monetary policy doesn't come out of the U.S. Fed. Look, they don't even have the proper representation. He's going to appoint a bunch of people soon. And basically, we are going to see, if we are correct, a transformation that is going to be painless. In 18 months, we just got to see a complete transformation to show the swamp in Washington, to show the swamp in all of our deals, all of our foreign deals, to show the swamp in the United Nations, to show the swamp in NATO, to show Obama's swampiness that went to Iran, that went bombed eight countries, that started this refugee nonsense. It's not nonsense. It's killing people. This is a mass murderer we're dealing with, and he needs to be dealt with as such. There's no words that I can give to how bad Obama was. They now do, they now do across the board surveys, and he's rated as the worst president in U.S. history. Why? Because every single thing that we now discover he did was lawless. He broke the law. DACA is breaking the law, letting the borders break, uh, not exist, breaking the law, catch and release is breaking the law. All the things that he did, you know. Well, you can hardly overthrow a government if you don't break a few laws. Uh, that's true, and that's what he was doing. This was a revolution against America, and Hillary was about to uh, put the icing on the cake. So when it comes down to Jones, here's what we believe. We have to wait about two to three weeks to see what happens. Yes. The reason is because the last time, the last two or three times this has happened, Jones was threatened. He came on foaming at the mouth, saying that they're closing him down and he's going crazy, but he didn't do a single thing to transfer any of his works to a new platform, now did he? And isn't that what Matt Drudge told him to do how long ago? Isn't that what Breitbart told him to do how long ago? Well, would you take their word? I, I don't take But why Matt is he staying on a platform that is private that can close him down for blinking his eye wrong, which is because reality. That's the user agreement. It says... You give up everything. Okay. The bottom line is, let's see what happens. Because he was right back up after those other incidents just recently. What's going to happen in two weeks to Alex's but show? I, but I want to say something very important. 
Roger Stone had a show on Alex Jones, as well as David Knight, as well as a few others, as well as a few guests. And then Roger Stone did a one-on-one interview with Alex Jones, where they went into the details of what we reveal here on this channel and what was revealed through the work on election rigging, showing that every single machine in this country is owned by private interests, especially Smartmatic, which is owned by Lord Malik Brown, uh, by Mitt Romney. I'm sorry, Mitt Romney is is part owner of uh, Smartmatic, and his son runs it. Malik Brown owns a whole bunch of them, but they uh, but they started. Malik Brown started Optech, which is the software in every single machine, whether it be uh, InterCivic Heart, whether it be Dominion, Sequoia, Smart, Diebold, doesn't matter. I know. Every machine. I went to the primaries today and voted on a heart intercivic machine and looked at it and realized this is a corrupt machine. I, there is foreign interference in every single one of these machines. They need to all be ripped out and we need to go to strict paper ballots and human counting. And it could be a coincidence that Alex Jones, just for the first time, in my opinion, started reporting on some of the most powerful and explosive things the senior executive service. The contracts given to Serco, which is a British company that literally owns the shares, the, the majority shares of Lockheed, of British Aeronautic in uh, BAE, are, all of our five top contractors are all being controlled by the British Privy Council. In many cases, she owns the Queen or the King, who the next King, whoever owns the golden shares in our military industrial companies that actually have corporate intelligence like Lockheed, which just sold their entire company to Lidos. Uh, for for uh, military um, corporate intelligence. So what we're dealing with here is a rigged system of every place that money flows. And it should not be surprising to people. People always get really wigged at me that I don't get upset sometimes about things. And I'm saying, but wait, ego um, deprecation, ego expansion, ego... Um, glorification, all the seven deadly sins of the ego are all explicated in America at the to the greatest degree because this is the home of freedom. We have to expect that, but we do not have to dip there. We do not have to sink. Justice does not have to sink to the lowest common denominator. And money doesn't have to always rise to the person with the greatest vested interests, which is what we're seeing. So this is just simply working out vices and virtues. And what Trump is going to do is going to be so beautiful because he's already set this up. And he's already saved us trillions and trillions of dollars. He quotes 10 trillion he's brought back to the economy. And that's much more than that. And, uh, but yes, Mr. Trump, you have to use real numbers. But we're saying we can do a little projection. Like we projected there were 22 million illegal aliens. No, now the FBI core document just came out and said there are 44. Those are 44 million, million illegal aliens that they know of that they have a record on. Why is the FBI keeping track of these Every one of them is committing a crime. But the FBI can't find crime. And they have the biggest crimes in the world going on under their roof. And not one agent in the FBI has come forward and said, I found a crime. Millions of these people could simply be cross-checked with the Social Security to find they're using Social Security numbers of other people or dead people. And that is supported by the Social Security Department uh, agency. Social Security, it's supported by... And that is supported by Social Security and IRS. This has come out quite clearly. And they say, no, we, we have no real policies against stopping people who are paying taxes with Social Security numbers that don't belong to them. And we even give them tax returns. And we know that those people are dead. But we don't have a crossover system, supposedly, with Social Security to determine that. And so FBI does. FBI looks at them and says, look, there's 44 million of these people. What do they do about it? Nothing. But then what did the FBI do about our borders that aren't secure. What did the FBI do about 911? What did the FBI do about every time there's a big crime? 75% of the time. They're usually the ones say, running the false flag. At the, least it appears to me when I watch it. Or they've at least taken these people in and released them, which means they are culpable, which means they are complicit. And that's what we know on, the, on, on just the surface. You know, 75% of these shooters had already been questioned by the FBI and released. The FBI is not doing anybody any good except those who they are protecting, which are the people inside of the Washington, D.C. elite, which is a very, as somebody said today, 
probably if we took 3,000 people out of the federal system, it would be completely adjusted. And I thought, wow, yeah, 3,000 against 350 million, and they win. Well, that's about right. But they're not winning. They're losing, and they're losing all over the place. If they don't think kicking Alex Jones off would get some attention, you're mistaken. So did they get that attention on purpose? Well, we can go into a great deal of detail, but recently when he reported on these very things that we're reporting on, which are so explosive that anyone in the Justice Department with a wink and a nod from the, uh, uh, to the FBI could go arrest these people simply on the evidence we presented. But it does not happen. But it will happen. And what we keep pointing out is when the whole thing gets revealed. So what is happening right now? Unprecedented amount of senators and representatives leaving the Congress. Why? They know it's rigged. Stock market is doing things that no one has seen in history. Why? Trump knows it's rigged and he lets it be rigged. And when they try to plummet it, he's going to use the exchange stabilization fund as he recently did with China and smash them with their attempt in currency attacks on us. And he will simply use this against the feds, against the central bank, and he will simply freeze them. He'll make them hold those assets, <laughs> which is beautiful. With one tiny order, he could freeze them. So he does, these people don't know who they're dealing with. Trump goes to the heart of the problem, which is almost always monetary. If you want to fix it, it's almost monetary. But it starts with a moral foundation, which he has. And so if you say you're going to go and look at a problem, not like Obama did lawlessly with unlawful intent for his own seven deadly sin enrichment. Trump doesn't care. He's doing it for the American people. He's doing it altruistically. So he goes with the moral intent. And by the way, they haven't caught him on anything because he's not guilty. And so, but he did play the game. He knows how to play the games and he's playing the games. Uh, he's playing their games and he's winning because he's brought morality into it, something that they don't bring. So when we're talking about what's happening with free speech, we are on the precipice. We are on the edge. We are looking over a tremendous cliff. And the only way out is that I think Trump has ditched Dan Coats and decided to do this on his own. And so he's put pressure on Australia. He's put pressure on these other countries to say, get your taxes from these jerks. I'm going to get mine. And if you don't get yours first, I'm getting mine. So you see what happens? They have to pay out. Their stocks still go up because it's rigged. And in the end, when it comes down, there will be nothing there. He can let the stock market crash back two thirds, get, get rid of the U.S. Federal Reserve, do a little currency adjustment, and stop the entire IRS. He won't even have to have the IRS anymore. You could simply pay taxes when you buy things. And he's Tran talked about all these things. Transactional fee. Transactional, that's it. Yeah. So if you're rich, you don't and, get and tax write-offs anymore. When you buy something, you pay for it. And we've also written, we wrote a well over a year ago about how we can, how the uh, fiat currency is being, has phased out into this new uh, U.S. Treasury note, these $100 mm -hmm. bills. I'll put that link. It's a fascinating uh, look at what could happen. And none of us would here in mid-America, middle America, wouldn't be affected. But all those fat cat silicon boy globalists, they will collapse. They'll be the homeless ones and the ones in the FEMA camps, not us. And the beautiful part, he'll make the central banks hold that one-third of the stock of the stock market, or else let it crash. And then he'll start charging tax on the New York Stock Exchange. There'd need to be no taxes on even for purchasing tax, sales tax anymore, if you simply stop, if you simply had taxes on the buys and sells that are happening every moment on the New York Stock Exchange. You're going to stop derivatives because when it all crashes, derivatives will have to go first because they're built that we're supposed to pay them first. We're Wait. supposed to pay the banks on their betting on whether things go up or down before we pay the people who have all their money invested in their 401k. That's the way that the system works. He's not going to allow that to happen. He's going to have a bank day. And on that bank day, the SEC will simply freeze everything. It'll all get sorted out, and it'll be a piece of cake, actually, because he has it all in his head. We know that because he's following the exact plan that we laid out from the beginning. We gave him 13 points to follow. He is active on every one of those points. And go back, and you can look this up. 
to prove that what we're saying is true. And he's active on every one of those. And I just mentioned a bunch of them. The collapse of the NATO, the collapse of the United Nations, the collapse of the U.S. Fed. And it's not, it's a, it's a purposeful collapse. This is a controlled demolition. demolition. It has to happen, folks. So, you know, get yourself prepared. We're going to be fine after the crash. Uh, We're in good hands. The captain of our ship has sailed these waters many times into bankruptcy. He knows exactly what to do. Now, mind you, Manafort, Gates, the Podestas, what are they being charged with? The thing that they hold the most sacred, offshore accounts. Does Trump have any offshore accounts? Oh, no, he doesn't. Does McCain have offshore accounts? Oh, I will bet a nickel he does. Hey, proof of life, proof of life. Has anybody seen John McCain? I don't know. Uh, He may be just like he was in Vietnam. He's in having a party while the rest are in prison. And that's what he was accused of. That's why they call him the songbird. The people who were in Vietnam with him call him the songbird. Hmm, but they keep electing him. Oh, that's right. The machines are rigged. Anyway, let's go back. So, Betsy, just like... The collapse of the World Trade Centers, controlled demolitions. Trump is taking down these different agent, these different huge, massive globalist sucking machines. And the big, one of the biggest ones is offshore accounts, which I'm talking about here. When he, when the United States government went after offshore accounts in Switzerland and stopped numbered accounts, they moved them to gold bullion accounts. Recently, Switzerland moved a lot of their assets over to. Bullion accounts, isn't that funny? So that gives you a big warning of what's about to happen. And that's where all the big money went, is into bullion, okay? That's the reason you see so many leases of gold back and forth. Well, offshore accounts are just digits. So all Trump has to do is what they did before and say, they're illegal, we're going after all of you. And what he does, that's the end of tax evasion in America. 65% of American Wealth leaves America every year and goes into offshore accounts and no taxes are paid into it. Many of them are these hedge funds and um, banking um, groups that are, in fact, uh, uh, buying uh, longs and shorts and derivatives and basically betting. This is betting on a global banking broker level. So he's going to simply stop that. And when these things stop, why? Because they're illegal. For once, a president is going to say, oh, they take that much money out illegally? Well, how can I get my piece? For once, a president's going to say, that's illegal. I'm going to stop it. 